good morning, church. Welcome. So glad you are able to be here on campus today. For those who are tuning in, live stream, welcome. Thank you for joining us. This morning, I had a good laugh because I looked out and saw that the sun was trying to shine and it was trying to snow at the same time. And so, so far, the sun is winning. <laughs> But I am praying that the snow might prevail tonight. <laughs> I know. Don't throw anything at me. <laughs> it's almost winter time, you know. I know it's hard for you to give up on summer. Well, I'm so glad that we could worship together today. We ask to, to uh, join together our hearts so we can enjoy the Lord's blessings. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you this morning and thank you again for the gift of this day for your faithfulness for every season. Now for this opportunity, Lord, as we gather together here on campus, those who are tuning in live stream, Lord, that we might honor you with our all our expressions of worship and that you might bless and that we might be strengthened today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Well, let's continue to celebrate. We invite you to stand together with us. As the orchestra leads us in the song, Standing on the Promises of God, words will be up on the screen.
God has been so good to us and we have so much to be thankful for. And this is the month that we focus on thanksgiving to God, the provider of all things. And because he has provided, we naturally want to be givers. And so think of ways that you can bless people where you work, in your neighborhood, in your school, wherever you go. Think this week about how I can bless others because God has blessed me. And as a congregation, every year we do something together where the Saturday before Thanksgiving, we give boxes to families in need. And one of the years that was really significant was the year that about a third of our congregation was laid off. And we pretty much said, this was back in the 2008, 2010 frightening era. And we said, everybody who's working, bring a box. Everybody who's not working, come get a box. Mm -hmm. And we just made sure that we shared, you got a neighbor who needs a box, let's get a box for your neighbor. You got a coworker, or a laid-off co-worker who needs a box, let's get a box for everybody. And so that's, that c tradition continues. And if you need a box, you fill out this form. It's out on the bulletin board. You can do it quietly. You can s just hide if you don't want anybody to know. But it, there's no shame in that game. We all have times that we need, and we have times that we can give. So if you need a box, fill out one of these. You can put it into that box back there, the offering box, or you can give it to a deacon or the pastor on your way out. We'll make sure there's a box for you. If you don't need a box, contribute. And we've got, we'll be Wednesday night trying to gather all the things for the boxes. Wednesday night, 7 p.m. service is dedicated to you bringing your boxes, filling boxes, enhancing boxes. If there's a large family that needs a box, two cans of green beans won't do it. So we're gonna enhance boxes that need to be enhanced. Decorate boxes so they're not just plain old brown and do what we can do on Wednesday night. And then on Saturday morning, 11 to one, come pick up your boxes, bring somebody over to get a box just participate in the family of God this week. It's an act of worship to God to care for your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And it's an act of worship mm -hmm. to God to humble yourself enough to say, Lord, I need something from my family. Yeah. And, and don't, don't be afraid of it or ashamed of it. We've all been there. So let's see what we can do to make this a great Thanksgiving prep week. And then after that, it's Thanksgiving. And everybody will have the things they need to cook the dinner without worrying about it. We know that likely in our community, there aren't people who are so desperately poor, they won't have a Thanksgiving dinner. But what people do, they take their electric bill money and pay for it. And then it starts the holiday season off in a deficit. And so we don't want anybody to do that. So let's just make sure everybody gets what they need. Um, are we all in? Yeah. And let's pray together. And then I'd say one more thing. Tonight at 7 p.m., uh, we'll have a live streaming of the International Mission Board's commissioning of an appointment of 26 new missionaries. You can be here and watch it, which is the preferable way. If you can't, you can... Uh, search for IMB Sending Service and go on and log in at home. I hope you'll come. There's something so fun about sitting here together and watching our missionaries being appointed. I, I cry as if I were still in the room where it's happening, even when I'm sitting here. So it, it, it touches me to know that in the wicked world that we live in, in the dangerous world that we live in, God is still calling out his messengers and still sending them. And I want to participate in that in any way I can, even if it's sitting here watching a live stream and praying for them. So I hope you'll join us tonight at 7. Let's pray together. Mm -hmm. Father, you've been good to us. You have blessed this church in ways that we don't even see. But you've provided for our needs. You kept us all afloat through a pandemic. You have held on to us and shown us that you are our savior. And Father, we thank you that we are here honoring you today. And I pray that we will honor you with our giving. I pray that we will honor you in our sharing and that we will honor you in our praises that we give back to you, the King. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I invite you to sing one more song with us and then Pastor Herb's gonna come and share words from the Bible and Yes, this is a good time to turn off your cell phones, silence your cell phones devices, 
Remove all distractions as we get ready to hear from the word of the Lord. Let's make this our prayer as we get ready to hear from the word. Worship team, again, welcome. So glad that you could come and to worship together. This past week has been the most crazy, extreme week, perhaps, of this year. Lots of good stuff, and as well as challenging bad stuff has happened. So this morning, before we dive into God's Word, Let's celebrate something wonderful that happened. Because it goes with the theme today, and that is God has given us great freedom. And we're blessed because we have a military that preserves that freedom for us. Amen? Amen. And so um, this week, in spite of everything that happened, happened, we could celebrate and honor those who serve in the military. And so we have many in our church. And so we want to just say thank you. So if you've served or are serving in the military, would you just please stand for a moment? We just want to say thank you. Amen. Thank you for your service. Let's uh, pause here and just... Give thanks to God for these who serve us and that we could come this morning. There's no uh, military or terrorists at the door that prevent us from worshiping God. And so we are blessed still today with the freedom that we enjoy. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's join our hearts together in a prayer. Lord, we just come this morning to say thanks again for your blessings for this wonderful gift of freedom. Lord, I thank you for all these who have served us, those who are currently serving. We pray your blessing on them. Lord, your safety, bless them in all their job assignments. And thank you again that we could come this morning and give thanks. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. And amen. If you have a copy of God's Word, would you turn in your Bible a letter the great Apostle Paul wrote, Galatians chapter 6, Galatians chapter 6. If you like sermon notes, they're in your worship guide and they'll, we'll go through those on the screen. Scribble out some things that the Lord highlights for you and uh, make your notes <clears throat> because... Uh, Today is a special day to help us prepare 
going forward after all that's happened. Now, Paul writes to a culture and a church in the midst of that culture similar, I believe, to what we are facing today. And so in chapter 5, verse 13, he writes, We are given freedom in Christ, but don't use this as an opportunity to sin. That means just to do whatever we want. It's not a free-for-all because we enjoy freedom. But it's an opportunity to serve God and to do what's right, even though the culture around us may not do what's right. We as Christians are given the freedom to stand, perhaps sometimes by ourselves, seemingly, to do what's right. And that's what honors God. That's what gives a great witness to those who are watching our life. And that will be what God will use to bless and to change hearts and minds. Now, our mission assignment today from God's Word is how do we respond to this craziness that happened this past week. Perhaps things did not turn out the way that you and I have hoped. But in the midst of all this, Paul writes to a culture that perhaps we can learn and apply and know how to respond today similar. Now, he teaches and preaches the gospel And that's a good reminder to us because no matter what troubles we face, no matter what difficulties going on in our culture, the answer is a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. God loves us and he's provided a way that we can enjoy, no matter what's happening around us, this personal relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. That's why we encourage, we share what's called the gospel. That's the good news. That the more that we follow Christ, learn how to live, that helps us know and reminds us how much God loves us. You see, we live in a world, as you know, that has a misunderstanding or no knowledge of who God is. The greatest way, as we live our lives by faith, follow Christ, we can display how much God loves us and help people understand who God really is. Amen? Amen. So, Paul writes this wonderful letter, and I would encourage you to look at the end of chapter 5 today, this week, in your personal study. It'll help us deal with what's going on in our culture. Now, with that, the Apostle Paul contrasts In that day and time, that culture was very committed to the law in the way that if they could make something legal, then that was the justification to do whatever they wanted to do. It's a lot like what's going on in our culture today. If people can just get something legal, then that gives them permission to do what they want to do even though it may not be right or pleasing to God. Amen? Amen. But people, their fallback is, they say, well, it's legal. I'm not breaking any laws, and so I can do this. But is it good? Does it please God? A lot of this stuff that was approved this past week may not be good and pleasing to the Lord. Amen? Amen. But because now some of it will become law, People will use that to say, I'm not breaking the law, it's legal. And all that means is it gives permission for people to sin. And so that's what Paul wrote. He contrasted this. He said, the people in Galatia made things legal so that they could say, I'm not breaking the law and I can do this activity even though it's not pleasing to God. And so in contrast then, Paul preaches something greater than the law and legal, grace that gives freedom to do what's right, to live a life that pleases God. 
And with that, we will be blessed as well as those who are influenced by our lives. They will be blessed. And so God <clears throat> gives us this great freedom in Christ so that we can live and enjoy his blessings and be a good influence to those around us. Now, sometimes in your workplace, you may seem like you're the only one who's doing what's right. But you're not alone. God's with you. <clears throat> in your neighborhood, it may seem like that <clears throat> you're the only house that's trying to do what's right. But you're not alone. In our culture, in our neighborhood, in this city... It may seem like we're in the minority, and sometimes the way you measure that, yes, we are in the minority. But when God's with us, He will bless us, He'll work through us, and we will see great things come about. That's what living by faith is all about. And so Paul preached that message of the gospel to a culture similar to what we're experiencing today. Well... I want to highlight three things that Paul challenges the culture of that day that we can apply to us today. All right, chapter 6, find verse 7. Here's the first thing. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, he also will reap. So Paul reminds the people that day, and a good reminder to us, okay, he gives a warning and a challenge. The first is the warning, we're not going to get away with anything. Now, we might fool some people. We might think that what we've done, you know, nobody knows, but God knows. And so if you want to go out and sin and do evil, you might get away with it temporarily, but God sees, God knows. And so Paul reminds the people of Galatia because, see, they made all these things legal so that they could do what they wanted. And Paul reminds them and us as well, God knows, God sees. You may think you're getting away with something. No, you're not. Whatever you sow you also reap. So don't be deceived. Now that's the second thing, is a challenge. This applies for good and bad. Go out and do terrible things, and what are you gonna, what's your reward? You're going to receive terrible things. Go out and live a life of faith. Please God, do what's right. And what can you expect? God's blessing in your life. God always is looking for people who live by faith to stand and honor and worship Him. And with that, God will bless your life. Amen? Amen. Now, I can share that today. We can read about how that applied to that culture of that day. But until you and I live that and experience that, you see, when we do that and we get down the road of life, we stop, we look back, and then we see... Most of the time, how God was with us. God blessed us. He brought us through some difficult times. And so, don't be discouraged. God is not mocked. Now, in a practical way, you know, from time to time, I ask you to pray for me. And it's going better for me in road rage. But from time to time, when somebody cuts me off or does something, and all of you know in the midst of construction, there's always that one vehicle that wants to go all the way up when you're supposed to merge. Are you with me? Yeah. yeah. And they go right to the end, and then they want to let you, or you got to let them in. And they cut in at the last minute. And so I found myself saying, God, did you see that? <laughs> Get that person. <laughs> God's better at doing and, getting, and bringing justice than you or I, okay? So, don't be deceived. You won't get away with anything. God knows, God sees. Amen? Amen. And we can expect 
live a life of faith, honor God, and you can enjoy his blessings in your life. And oftentimes it comes in unexpected ways. But that's for another sermon. All right, verse number nine. <clears throat> Let's pick up the story from there. So we must not get tired of doing good. For we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. Here's the second thing that Paul encouraged the Christians, especially in that day. And it's a good reminder to us. If the devil can get us to quit, he wins. Because we get tired of doing good. People often uh, forget to say thanks and don't appreciate what we're doing, whatever. And so, we, yes, we do get tired. But in that, Paul reminds, don't give up. God will use those things that we do for good. And we never know, as God continues to work, how he will bring about change in a person's heart and life. Oftentimes, God does his best work. We can't see the visible results until down the road. <clears throat> so, don't give up. We do get tired. Amen? Amen. But don't quit. Keep going. And then the reward comes. Paul reminds, at the right time, there will be a harvest. Now, <clears throat> I want to remind you, God is faithful for every season. We've had a great summer. Lots of great things have happened. But winter is coming. I know that's hard for somebody. <laughs> but don't quit. Don't give up. Because you know what comes after winter? Spring. Spring. <laughs> and you start to see those little buds and those little flower shoots pop up, whatever. And then <clears throat> spring arrives and summer comes again. God is faithful. Amen? Amen. So, winter will not last forever. <laughs> Contrary to what the climate change people are saying. <laughs> you see, in 1975, I remember the predictions were the world was going to freeze over. And we would freeze to death. And I was just remembering, I'm so glad the, you know, glaciers did melt a little bit. So... <laughs> We have beautiful Michigan because the glaciers melted. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so, <clears throat> enough of that. We get tired. But at the right time, we'll enjoy the harvest, God's blessings. And with that, we can enjoy <clears throat> God's blessing when it comes at the right time in unexpected ways. So, yes, we get tired. Ask the Lord for extra strength and blessing. We gather together to encourage one another and to keep going. So, look at verse number 10. The third thing, here's what Paul says, therefore. Now, he's laid the groundwork in these first two things. God is not mocked. Don't give up. But he says, therefore, verse 10. As we have opportunity, we must work for the good of all, especially for those who belong to the household of faith. Paul reminds the people that day, and it's a good reminder to us, in the midst of all the craziness, don't miss opportunities. Oftentimes in crisis, for example, with the hurricanes, all the disaster relief, we've got people because we've given money because we've sent people, we've been praying, God does his best work to help people in their times of suffering and crisis. Amen? Amen. Amen. This next couple weeks, we have an opportunity to do great work to bless those who are in need. And that through this Thanksgiving and these turkey baskets, it'll help people think about God and who he is and that he loves us. And so with that... Don't miss these opportunities. All of us can do something. 
with that, what has God gifted you? Has he gifted you with resources? Then use them to bless others. God's gifted you with a little bit of time. This is a great opportunity to think of somebody and help someone else. We never know a kind word to do something just to help people it makes a big difference. And most of all, remember, nothing that we do for the Lord is wasted. Oftentimes the devil will try to convince us that, well, I can't do this big thing or I can't give a big gift or whatever it is. No, God can take even the smallest thing and bless and multiply it. My favorite story of the gospel and Jesus' ministry is a little boy had a lunch and he gave it to the Lord. And what did Jesus do with that small lunch? He, made it grow. he blessed it and multiplied it and fed over 5,000 people. <laughs> so you might have just a small gift of time, talent, or money. God can take that and make a difference in someone's life. Don't miss these opportunities. Well, <clears throat> the Apostle Paul reminds us in the midst of this craziness of the culture, especially this last week, how should we respond? I know there's a lot of people who are angry. A lot of people are disappointed. A lot of people, they don't know what to do. <clears throat> this is the time for you and I as Christians. Be strong. Remember that God loves us. Amen? Amen? And that's the greatest message we can communicate to others in the midst of when they're angry or disappointed or don't know what to do. Remember, God loves us. Amen? Amen. But then... <clears throat> We can trust God's word. He said over and over again, he's with us. What happened this week did not catch God off by surprise. God's not up in heaven going, oh, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to happen. <clears throat> no. He loves us. He's with us. God wants to take and use this as an opportunity to minister to you, your family, and through you to touch somebody's life. This could be the greatest week of ministry. This could be our finest hour to see God work and change people's lives for eternity. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you and I would just be ready. And so renew your commitment this morning to say, okay, Lord, I'm ready. I'll do whatever you show me to do. As you see opportunity, will you do it? And then, <clears throat> obedience always brings God's blessings. And so when God shows you, don't hesitate. Just do what God has asked you to do. You'll enjoy the blessing. God will be honored. And those that you minister to will receive the blessing. So, God has given us great freedom. The people in that day and time in that culture tried to say, we can do whatever we want. And that's partially true. But if you do whatever you want, you're also going to reap the consequences of doing whatever you want. Amen? Amen. But if you will live by faith and honor the Lord, we also will receive great blessing. <clears throat> blessing of obedience. Let's be a church that honors God this week and the next few weeks through all our ministry, through our prayers, through our giving, through our service. Let's be families that join together when you sit down to pray Give thanks for how God has been with you this year in this time. 
And most of all, let's be ready to do what God gives us to do as individuals. Let's stop here and pray. <clears throat> Lord, thank you that we can learn from what you did so long ago through great Apostle Paul as he encouraged the people in that culture in that day. Lord, help us that we might apply some of these things to our own life. Lord, I thank you that we can be reminded that you love us. That you've given us the greatest gift, and that is freedom to live our lives of faith, to do what's right, and to minister to others. Lord, give us the confidence and the courage to do that today and this week. And Lord, help us to be people, families, and a church that obeys as you direct us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Worship team's going to come. Lead us in a song of opportunity. For those who are on campus, I'll be here in the front. If you'd like to come and sit with me, uh, I'll share with you, pray with you, whatever encouragement you need. For those who are watching, God bless you for joining us today. Let us know how God is working in your life. Let us know how we can pray for you. And we'll continue to share the opportunities this week and the next few weeks. This is the time. Don't miss what God wants to do. Let's stand together and give this opportunity. I invite you to sing, Set My Soul of Fire. Words will be on the screen. <laughs>
talk to those who are watching live stream, thank you for joining us today. And our sister Alinda and then sister Phyllis, who would turn me for our deaf, deaf friends, thank you so much for your service. Um, Pastor Hearn, we've been coming to you live from Sterling Heights, Michigan. So I know we have several who are watching from around the nation and perhaps the other side of the world. So God bless you wherever you're watching from. We look forward to hearing how God's working in your life and how we can pray for you. Remember, <clears throat> the greatest gift we can give to others is to pray for them. Amen. Amen.